This course presents a philosophical approach to hunting down PC problems and providing practical solutions. I'm not going to list everything because with all the combinations of hardware and software, the potential for things to go wrong is just too vast to list them all. Therefore, my approach is to describe how things work and which tools you can use to help resolve issues. As you'll discover, Windows is bursting with helpful utilities, some of which you probably know about and others that will surprise you. Nothing happens in a story unless a character or situation doesn't obey the given rules. From this nonconformity, the story emerges. Without it, drama doesn't exist. Problems with your computer can be dramatic, but it's not disobedience that causes the trouble. No, the root of issues you have with your computer, the situation that leads to just about anything going awry, is change. PC trouble comes from change. And that's the topic of this movie. When something goes wrong with your computer, a software program, or Windows itself, the question you must ask is what has changed? Have you added a peripheral? Was a software update recently installed? Did you change a setting? When you consider these changes, it truly helps you focus on the cause of the trouble. As an example, my PC's backup program stopped working. It wouldn't function and I couldn't get it to start. Then I recalled that there was a power outage the night before. That interruption was probably enough to disrupt the backup's regular schedule. The change affected the system. In the case of my backup not working, the first thing I tried was to restart the computer. That's the general purpose, tried and true method to fix most computer glitches. And in this case, it worked. The backup performed flawlessly after the system reset. But my point is that change, the power outage in this case, is what caused the trouble. Evaluating change may not give you the immediate answer, but it does lead you down the proper path. For example, if you install a new mouse, but the keyboard stops working, then you can guess that the mouse itself, the mouse's drivers, or something related to the installation caused that problem. Sure, the problem could be coincidental, but my experience tells me most of the time it's the thing that changed that tells you where to look first. My point isn't to avoid change. It's just to be alert. That change could cause the trouble. So what do you do? First, you can save your stuff. Don't install a new program, add a peripheral, or change network settings when you've been working on a document for three hours and you haven't saved it. That's just silly. Second, ensure that you have a current backup handy. Windows comes with a backup utility, and you need an external storage device or a network drive to make it work, but that's not an excuse to avoid backing up your stuff. In fact, that's my third and fourth point as well. Backup is important. Fifth, just be observant. A solution can be found. Most of the time, PC trouble isn't fatal, and the woe caused by changes is temporary. Finally, one element of change that you can't avoid is time. Things wear out. Hardware gets old. Software needs updating. A spinning hard drive can last only so long before the bearings wear and you need to replace it. Software updates, they address bugs and fix security issues, but only when you install them. You can't avoid time, but you can prepare for it. As an example, a hard drive with old bearings makes a hell of a racket. That's an audio clue that the drive is going bad and it needs to be replaced. And when a software update is available, such as a hardware driver, install it. Later movies go into details on this process. You can't avoid father time, but you can be proactive. Also, consider that most PCs are good for about four to six years of life. After that, consider getting a new one. That's because eventually time catches up and the best way to fix things at that point is to replace the entire system. A good first step toward resolving a computer issue is to determine whether the source is hardware or software. This determination isn't easy to make. Malfunctioning hardware can make software, particularly Windows, behave erratically. Likewise, bad software can make it appear as though hardware is to blame. The good news is that hardware issues are often detected when the computer starts, or not. When hardware fails, it doesn't work, and the device simply isn't available. In this movie, I cover various ways to determine whether an issue is hardware or software related. 
the tools I mention are covered in more detail in later movies. For example, when the PC starts up, it performs a power on self test or post. If any hardware fails to operate, a message appears on the screen. And if the monitor isn't working, you hear a series of beeps from the console's speakers. The post doesn't catch all hardware failures, but it's the first step in checking whether a hardware issue exists. After the PC is started, the next step is to check for hardware issues using the Device Manager. Tap the Windows key, type Device Manager, press the Enter key to choose the top item on the list and open the Device Manager window. You see a list of all your PC's hardware. If any devices are malfunctioning, their section is open and they're flagged with a yellow triangle, such as those items shown here. The solution could involve reinstalling a device driver, which is covered more specifically in a later movie, but two tricks you can perform before then are to disable and re-enable the device or swap out the hardware. To disable a device, right-click on it. Choose Disable. Confirm that you want to disable it, and it's disabled. Now you re-enable it, and hopefully that solves the problem. Right-click, choose Enable. And in this case, it didn't. The other way to resolve some hardware issues, specifically with peripherals, is to swap out the hardware. For example, you swap out a mouse, keyboard, or monitor with one that works. If the swapped out hardware doesn't malfunction, then you know it's the original peripheral that's at fault and not something else in the system. To solve the problem, replace the defective hardware. Internal components are more difficult to swap out, but failure of these items is a wee bit more obvious. A fried power supply just doesn't work. The fan doesn't whir and the PC doesn't turn on. The solution is to replace the power supply, and I recommend that the replacement be rated at a higher wattage than the original. For example, a 500 watt power supply to replace a 350 watt power supply. Other internal components can be swapped out or replaced as well, but you'll probably opt for replacement and not swapping, which is time consuming. For example, you can replace a video adapter, memory, and the mass storage device. These operations require some technical skill, plus they involve software issues such as reinstalling new drivers or even restoring the entire system from a backup. Troubleshooting software involves discovering which problem is causing the issue. Generally speaking, software issues are consistent, but which program is causing the trouble? You start with the operating system, Windows, then hardware drivers, and finally, the programs that you run. You can tell whether or not Windows is to blame when you start the PC in safe mode. If the problem persists in safe mode, then it's an operating system issue. You take steps in safe mode to address the problem, which is covered in another movie. Drivers are software programs that control your PC's hardware, such as the network driver, printer driver, and so on. When a driver malfunctions, the hardware doesn't work properly. The solution is to update or reinstall the driver, and if that doesn't work, then the hardware could be to blame. Software problems beyond Windows and drivers are specific to one program only, and usually they're consistent. You perform the same action and get the same buggy results, a crash or some other malfunction. These problems could be due to bugs or the sign of an improper software installation. If the problem is a bug, then it must be addressed by the program's developer. The best you can do is to check the developer's website and ensure that the bug exists. This topic is covered in another movie. If the software issue isn't a bug, then it's probably hardware, in which case you perform diagnostic tests on the PC to confirm that the hardware is functioning properly. PC dealers and repair places I've spoken with have three general rules when it comes to determining whether a problem is hardware or software. If the problem is inconsistent, it's hardware. If the problem is consistent, it's software. And if the problem is with the PC's firmware, which is the motherboard circuitry, then it will just drive you nuts. Above all, keep in mind that the root of all PC trouble is change. Whether you've changed hardware or software recently is your biggest clue to finding a hardware or software solution.